Okay, fantastic. Wanted to welcome you to Neil Schwartz Mastermind with Gene Tanner, the legendary Gene Tanner. You know it. Doing a great job. Yes, absolutely. From Utah. Spectacular. Gene, I remember, oh my gosh, it must have been 1997 or 1998 when I first met you. Uh, we were coaching together with uh, Mike Ferry. Yes, yes. Uh, you were my first coach in real estate, Neil. And then you decided, why don't I coach my own office? Yeah, why don't I do that? So I was so sad to lose you as my great coach. You taught me well, how to roll your old things. You're very, very kind. And it's been fabulous watching you. The trajectory that you've been on uh, has just been fantastic. Why don't you just take a minute or two and just kind of give us a little Reader's Digest version of when you started in the business and kind of how it's it's unfolded for you. Okay. Well, you know, I, I got into real estate and, you know, I came from a pretty poor family and uh, there was a book back in the 70s that said how to buy real estate with no money down. And I decided to do that. But then what I learned is, you know, that, that guy had been bankrupt about five times. So I needed to pay better attention to who I wanted to coach me. <laughs> so uh, I went to an association of realtors meeting in Park City, Utah, and there was Mike Ferry. And everyone was in sitting in the room, said, he's full of crap. He's full of crap. And so I joined in on that bandwagon, went in the back. And then I met one person, Judy Weber. You probably remember her, Neil. And she said, he's not full of crap, Gene. He's real. Just do what he says. And I did because I knew she was a successful agent. So that's how I started with Mike Ferry at his third superstar retreat. So what year was that, Gene? I don't even know. I always tell Mike, I don't even know how many. I have to ask how many. But I know I've been going to Mike Ferry for over 30 years. Wow. Fantastic. So 30 years ago, you started as a brand new agent. Uh, did you did you have a career in anything prior to that? Yes, I, I have an undergraduate degree in finance and advertising, uh, marketing, and then a master's degree in public administration. So technically, I could run a city or a hospital or something like that. But in Utah, they don't pay women beans. So, you know, I graduated with job offers at 60000 a year. And by then, I was over 350000 So I thought, oh. It was just kind of a mindset switch. Like, I guess I like real estate better. Fantastic. Very, very good. So um, it, it, over the years, uh, well, let's, let's, let's fast forward a little bit. In 2019, um, what kind of production did you do? I, I have missed my goal for the last two years of $3 million and I got 2.975. So I missed it by 25000 So that yeah, was... Yeah, yeah. You know, an overachieving kind of lady that uh, <laughs> continually misses her goals. Darn, I hate when that happens. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I, I'm very careful how I count as well. I know a lot of my ferry agents throw everything and their egos get kind of big. We've seen that. Um, not everybody, but my goal is to just track what Gene Tanner produces. Because, you know, as a broker and as, you know, your agents can all leave you and go somewhere else. The only person you can really rely on is yourself. So always pay attention to your own individual networking, productivity, outreach, because, um, you know, you, your pro production can drop immediately if the person on your team goes or somebody leaves or they get sick or something. So no, always remember to stay well connected to people. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great story. So 2019, you failed at a high level and not hitting your goal of $3 million by 25,000. Um, what, what size team are you running uh, for your own production? Yes, uh, and that's my own production. So I have um, two, two and a half administrative. I also am the broker of the company. I have uh, 18 agents. Some are assistants, but I don't have a an agent in my company that sells less than 80 transactions a year. Wow, fantastic. So how many, so, so as an agent, how many transactions was that for you? About 150. 100 just under 120 118 118 so you, know, we, you know what in mike ferry we count closed and then how many you have in the hopper for January. pending right so, closed and pending yes and i think we were closer to 140 if you count that way 
Got it. And most of those listings, uh, buyer sides? Mostly listings, mostly listings. Does, does your, do your agents sell your listings or do you sell your listings or how's that work? Uh, I, I don't, sh I, you know, I don't like that word to get out to my clients, but I don't personally show homes anymore. I used to kind of cherry pick the big million dollar ones, but I don't anymore. I just give those to my buyer's agents because it's just imperative, really imperative to just stay focused, focused, focused on being a listing agent. You know, you might think, oh, yeah, but that's a $90,000 commission. I mean, we, our average price point in Utah is significantly less than what yours is in California. Our average is about four seventy five. dollars So occasionally we'll get a, a big $3 million home, but our bread and butter is under $400,000. Under $400,000. So um, are you still prospecting or is that business just calling you? No, I, I uh, depends on my coach. They all change me back and forth. I was doing four to five hours a day. My new coach has challenged me to do the same production in two and a half hours a day. So I'm currently working only three days a week and I'm on track for over 3 million right now. And that, right. I'm not counting my buyer's agents in that. I'm just counting Gene Tanner production. So Gene Tanner's listings taken and listings sold, no mm -hmm. buyer transactions. No. Good no. for you. You go, girl. <laughs> I love it. So where's the bit, where's the, where are the listings coming from for you? Uh, prospecting, really. I mean, I, I always tell my young agents that are just starting in the business, uh, because I have been in the business 38 years, there's a couple of tips I wish I had known when I was starting out. And one of those is, you know, your database is liquid gold. I mean, my assistant said to me yesterday, I'm just so surprised at the detail of your notes that you keep. And I said, well, like what? And she said, you have in here that their dog's name is Blue and he's an Irish setter. So, you know, I do. When I call them, I say, hey, how's Blue doing? I don't hear Blue barking in the background. Or, you know, they tell me he died, Blue died and now they have a new puppy or just anything that you can connect with them. To, so the more, I, I think it, when we were, in the olden days of uh, M3, we had a guy by the name of Jay Abrams come in and speak to us. You might remember him, Neil, and he talked right. about how critical it is to have so much detail in your database. Because if you do retire someday, you want that information for the person you're going to sell your business to. So the mistake that I feel like I made not doing earlier in my career is keeping track of my ch clients' children's names and their ages. Because now I'm selling great grandkids houses, you know, that I've gone four generations of selling them homes. So it's really nice if you can say, hey, I was just wondering, isn't Johnny about in college now? How's he doing? Oh, he's just getting married, Gene. We're so excited. Hey, don't forget, I want to help him with the house, you know, so just. Everything that you can, I tell my, you know, uh, agents, whatever it is you're doing. You know, if you're at church, you better tell a real estate story in there somehow. You better make sure that you're not a secret agent. You've got to let people know what you do. Wow, fantastic. So, so you're spending uh, two and a half, three hours a day generating business. Uh, are you role playing? Are you uh, practicing? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Tell well, us about my, that. My schedule, I get up about, I get up at five. I work out for 45 minutes. I play the piano for an hour. I play the piano currently three hours a day. And so that's a lot to get in there. You know, you have to figure out what your goals are in life and what you want. And I'd like to be a great pianist. So I don't actually get to the office until 830. So usually I have a quick 15 minute huddle with my team just to say, what are you working on? What needs to happen? to get them started so that they're not waiting for me. And then I usually role play for 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, three days a week and 30 minutes uh, the other two, two days a week. So, but I still role play. My favorite role play script is the um, uh, setting up the appointment. You know, if, if, one, if what I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that I could sell your home, are you planning to list your home with me today? So you I, the pre I make script. my assistants use that for everything. So they, I often hear them say, hey, are you comfortable and confident? And, you know, so if, if, if your home inspection, you know, you're comfortable and confident, they use that, that 
comfortable and confident verbiage a lot in what we say to our clients. Well, that's great. Fantastic. So, Jean, let me ask you a question. Uh, you went into 2020. Uh, sounds like you were pretty strong coming off of a really good year in 19. Going into 2020, January and February were probably decently strong for you. What happened in March? What happened oh. uh, in, in, uh, with, with the COVID for you? Well, what my, my company here of about 20 was non-existent. I was the only one in the office. Everyone moved their computers home. And uh, when you really want to make sure you have money coming in, you call your COI. Um, you don't call your past client. You don't call your, excuse me, you don't call your FISBOs and expireds. You call people that know you, love you, want to do business with you. So I really focused on calling them. And it paid off in the long run. I, I also expanded my territory. Uh, I, I deal uh, in the Salt Lake City. I took listings two hours away. I did whatever I could to take listings. And that really took off. I, I've listed homes miles away from normal. You, you just didn't know for sure. I think you experienced that as much as we did. Nobody knows what's gonna happen. No, that's for sure. Nobody knew what was gonna go on. Uh, well, what I am hearing pretty consistently is that uh, great agents like yourself uh, pivoted or mm -hmm. created you know, maybe, maybe they kind of stalled for a moment and then just dug in and, and went to work. That's yes. pretty much what, what happened? Yes, yes. And, and maybe a lot of your office know the Evans brothers that work with me, Matt and Dan Evans. We just were, we just read, I personally read every book on grit there was in 2020, just to make sure that my mindset didn't go down. I wasn't struggling for mindset. And that really paid off. You know, I've, I've done that where I've just focused on certain topics for a whole year of what I can do to. And really, uh, the secret, I think, for my success in 2020 was I just really embraced the boredom of consistency. You know, doing the same thing day after day after day after day after day. And, you know, I would just tell myself, Gene, you're not here to be average. You are here to be awesome. And I don't, I don't like mediocrity. Uh, you know, my mom used to quote me that scripture. If you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You know, don't be lukewarm, you know, be all in, just do what it takes to be all in, in your life. And, and I had to go through and look at what, what I needed to be all in on. And one thing I learned that I try to teach my own agents that work for me is that preparation makes you unforgettable. So if you're prepared to go into a meeting, they're going to pick you every single time. But when you go in and wing it time after time after time, uh, you've got to be super prepared, not only mentally, but with your scripts and dialogues and role playing. Uh, I, I think I win about 95% of the listing appointments I go on. So Jean, what does prepared mean for Gene Tanner on a listing appointment? Can you walk us through that, that mindset, that preparation? Well, sure. I listened to that uh, song called On the Radio on the Way. It's called I Feel Good. Blah, 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 blah. You know, who sings that? I don't even know. I don't know. But I try to make myself feel good. Uh, I have focused on making. So here's a few tips I say when you're walking up to that front door, you better not be sauntering. You better walk with a very quick pace, your shoulders back, your posture, check your posture in the mirror, look at how your coats hang on you, your jackets. Um, you know, I still have a, a presentation jacket that I wear that's in my car. So if I haven't quite dressed up enough that for that day, I can throw that on. I always have different shoes in the car, just but your, your body language more than anything else, uh, they make a judgment on you in the first 10, 10 or 15, 20 seconds. Got it, got it. How about in terms of, uh, of uh, previewing property and knowing what's for sale, knowing your comps and things, how much time do you spend with that? Yes, um, my assistants do all of my CMAs. I review them, you know, I've been doing this a long time. My area is not as big as yours. 
but I review the market analysis and I'll say, this one doesn't fit, this one doesn't fit, change this one out, look for a different property and see what we can do to find something different. Okay, and then and then you're prepared. You do any, uh, um, do you send a pre-listing package? Yes, I do, uh-huh. Okay, good, so you make sure that so, so even Gene Tanner, who probably is going to get 95% of all the properties and is going on a, so you even send a pre-listing package if it's a past client and sphere? Yes, uh, because I've learned the hard way. Sometimes you think you have it in the bag and you go and they, one, one time a client said to me, you know, Gene, your, your energy level just wasn't there. This other, you didn't sell yourself. This other agent came in and just sold herself. And, you know, I learned after that, I give a presentation every single time at the highest level at the highest level uh -huh. with so pre-listing package reviewing the comps attitude approach and expectation mm -hmm. the right shoes in the car a new jacket if you need one your hair done up your nails are done and yeah. you're walking in with a big goofy smile and you have every intention of taking that listing correct well you know let me tell you um it's not smiling is not natural for me. It's very difficult for me, actually. You know, a lot of times people, till they get to know me, say, oh, I thought, I thought you were sort of untouchable at the retreat, or I, I didn't dare to talk to you. And so I've really had to work on that, but I tell myself every day, my smile is my secret weapon. And it really is. You can go in with a smile, because one thing you should always remember, you manufacture your own energy. Uh, we have a sign hanging up in our office that says, um, you're responsible for the energy you're bringing into this space. So I always think of that that's an affirmation I say to myself as I'm walking up to the front door, I'm responsible for the energy that's about to happen in this room. You know, you, you, you have, you're around an enthusiastic person. You're just naturally drawn to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. These are great thoughts. I'm taking all kinds of notes. Thank you. Um, so, Jean, um, let's go back a little bit in time, and, and maybe you, you do this with new agents in your office. You've got a new agent. Uh, they've got a little bit of experience. Uh, maybe they're okay on the scripts and dialogues. You know, what are the three or four things that you would leave us with for a brand new agent uh, or somebody with a little bit of skills and experience to navigate this marketplace and kind of take advantage of it? What, what would you say to them? Well, you know, I, <clears throat> I have great agents that work for me. You know, the Evans team, for example. For sure, for sure. I think we all we took a long time to get before. there. Sorry? Yes. And we, we, we all took a long time to get there. And if you just buy in to the Mike Ferry values and what Neil Schwartz teaches and you get the other out of your head, you just inundate your brain with good positive thinking because your, your brain is what controls everything about you, you know, and if you have good, powerful thoughts, but the, for a new agent, this is what I say, Neil can cut your learning curve down to five years to be making as much money as any of the top producers. It doesn't need to take you 10, 15, 20 years. So people say to me, when are you gonna retire, Gene? You obviously don't need to work. Well, what am I gonna do home all day? You know, <laughs> I love what I do, it's a passion. So find a passion that you love to do, make real estate your passion and you'll feel that passion if you know your scripts, I mean, I don't have to take in notes anymore to go on a listing presentation because I know it, Gene, will you cut your commission? No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Any other questions for me today? You know, you just move on. And when you role play, you, you become confident. And when you're confident, it shows. Got it, fantastic. So, and then the other one is just consistency. And, you know, I, I, I love these. They, both these books sit on my desk. I read a little bit out of them every day, Atomic Habits and Tiny Habits. But basically your entire day is 50% habit, they say. You know, it's just like even when you drive home in your car, you go down this road, down 800 East, go to Skyline Drive in your, your home. Well, what, what can you tag on there? 
So, you know, can you say, I could call three clients every day on my drive home. And you habit stack and you learn that these little tiny habits, the little tiny things that tweaks that you make in your day is what makes you great. And if you're struggling with doing your prospecting every day, which I would say that's everybody's number one drama, wouldn't you, Neil? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this 38 years, and I honestly don't like prospecting. I mean, I hear those guys up on stage, and they love it. They're nuts. (laughs) But you know what? You just have to do it anyway. And usually, you're fine after three. So if you're having a hard time, your goal's too big. You need to just say, okay, every day, I'm going to call five past clients, or maybe it's just one and just get success with that and then move up. But once you do two or three or five, pretty soon, it's pretty easy just to move up to 10 or 20 or 30 a day. Right. Very exciting. I love your energy and your passion. It's contagious. (laughs) Good, good. Fantastic. So uh, Jean, what would you say your, um, your superpower is? Oh, well, I, I think I have the ability when it comes time to really grind. Um, I would say that I can do the same amount of work in one hour that most people can do in three. So okay. it's really, you know, when I try to, re- I've really worked hard on keeping my morning perfect. Absolutely no appointments during the morning except what I already have laid out for the year. So if somebody says, come and list my $3 million home, I'm so sorry, I can't do that. But I could come at one o'clock today. Would that work for you? You know, well, I I have to do a morning. I said, can you, the only time I could meet you in the morning is at 7 a.m. Oh, okay. Because I don't mind shifting my exercise or my piano time, but I am not shifting my prospecting time no matter what. Wow. Love it. Fantastic. So, um, Gene, we had, I'd asked you a question the other day about your scripts and dialogues and what, what it, was there a particular phrase or script or dialogue that um, you finally got a hold of that, you know, when that comes up, boom, you own it. Is there anything that, uh, that comes to mind? Well, I think just asking for the business, I think, you know, a lot of times people simply don't ask for the contract. So I, the, I love the script. And I say it four or five times during the presentation, usually. Do you think that I could sell your home? Oh, yeah, Gene, I totally do. Well, let's just sign the contract. Let's get on with it. And so I think just asking for the business. One time I went with my buyer's agent. She said, Gene, come with me to this showing, and then we can talk on the way back and forth. I said, okay. We got in on the showing, and I thought, I'm just going to watch and see what she does. About eight or nine times into the showing, I had noticed she had closed eight or nine times. So I started to mentally count how many times she closed with that buyer on the showing. And it was over 30 times. So you've got to ask for the business. Keep asking, keep Mm -hmm. asking for the business. Mm -hmm. All right. Good stuff. So what does 2021 look like for you? What, where, um, where are you going to go with this, this business for yourself today? Well, you know, there's a lot of gloom and doom on the news, and I watch all the, oh, the forbearance foreclosures are happening by the end of March. But you know what? Mike Ferry says it's going to be about the same as it was last year. And so, you know, I, Mike, in, all, in 35 years of me following him, has never led us astray. I'm going to go with that. Because I think that your, your brain is an extension of your thoughts. And your countenance, your being, your entire mental state is just a, an extension of your thoughts. So I think it just starts with your mindset and just making sure you're filling it every single day with good, positive thoughts. And, you know, if you've got people that aren't very positive, try not to be around them very much. You know, seek out new people, new friends. And I think that's why we love Mike Ferry so much is because that I meet other people that are similar that want to, you know, in my area, I'm kind of a freak. Why do you, why are you so driven, Gene? I don't know. It's, I just am. I am. Well, you are doing a great job. Gene, let me ask you a question kind of off track. Do you always have a clean, neat workspace or did you do it just for this call? 
<laughs> no, it always looks like this. It always so, so, so when you, you walk in every you, morning. So have you ever been in, let me ask your agents, have you guys ever been into a hoarder's house? Yeah. Sure. Sure. What do you think their brain's like? <laughs> You're right. You know? And so if you, if you don't have a neat and orderly space, I know what your brain's like. It's jumbled in there. And you've got to really focus on having a clear, clean space to work from an environment. You know, I've got some nice organizer shells. You have to buy you some of those. But it, you, you cannot be like a hoarder's house in your brain. We've all been there. We've all thought, oh, my gosh. But, you know, I've listed hoarder's houses, and I tell them, you know, it was tough. I need you to get 90% of your stuff out, and I can sell this for you. And they do. And then they say, oh, we wish we'd have met you years ago because we've learned that it's so much easier to function in a clean environment. Yeah, that's a great point. Fantastic. Jean, you open to take a few questions today? Sure, you bet. Absolutely. Fantastic. All right. So questions for Jean Tanner. Raise your hand or, okay, Josie, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Josie. Hello, Jean. You are just darling. I love you. <laughs> Thank Actually, you. I wish you had you, we had you here or more often. Uh, your database that you call, it sounds like you take lots of detailed notes. Do you write them out like this? I, can't see it. Um, I have done that in the past and then I give it to my assistant. Um, but I, I use uh, Mojo Dialer and Vulcan 7. And I don't do anything but single dial. Mike's told us it's way too dangerous to triple dial anymore for fines and whatnot. And I just take all the notes as I'm talking to them in the computer. But you can take that note of everything you did and it might, and then I can just email it right to my assistant and it will say, please do a CMA on this house and it'll give her instructions. So she knows if she gets that, she gets the instructions. Perfect, perfect answer, thank you. Okay, good, all right, other questions. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Josie. Other questions? Tess, go ahead. I want to understand uh, about, you said that you're using Mojo and mm -hmm. Vulcan 7. Mm -hmm. And tell me what was the concept of that? Because I use Mojo, but I don't use Vulcan 7. Well, you know, I hate to give one up over the other, but here's why we like Mojo. Uh, they have a thing called the league. And I don't yes. know. And then I can see everybody else in my office who's on the phone that day and uh, I actually prefer to use Vulcan 7, but my agents like to hold me accountable that if I don't get my hours on Mojo, I have a fine. Mm, wonderful. That's uh -huh. good. So that I, but I use that a lot, Tess. Like I download all of my listings and my pending sales in. And so let's see, my sales meeting is Thursday at 1115 as well. So my goal is every Thursday morning, to call every single one of my listings, every single one of my pending sales, just check in with them and ask them for new business. Then my assistant, Laura, also calls every one of them every Tuesday and checks in with them as well. So they get us twice plus a few times in the week. The one thing in 2020 I really emphasized was over the top customer service. You know, I don't know where this came from, this you should under promise and over deliver. Mm -hmm. I think it was actually uh, from, I don't know, but that's the dumbest rule I've ever heard in my life. I think you should over promise everybody and over deliver with everybody. So I, I want them to know that what I tell them I'm going to do, I'm going to do. Beautiful. And one more comment that I wanted to um, ask, cause I tend to do this. I mean, I hardly smile, especially when I'm very intense when I'm thinking of something and I'm really deep into it. Uh -huh. How do you overcome that? Because sometimes, I don't know, um, people probably think that I'm not approachable. I probably, that's why I think I am. But how do you, yeah, how yeah. do you overcome that? Well, Zoom has helped me a lot because I have had to do listing presentations by Zoom. And I look at my face on there and I think, oh my gosh, smile. You know, you just don't realize you almost have to go overkill on the smiley to be normal for me. I mean, some people are just naturally smiley. 
You yeah. Know, I'm the kind of person like at the superstar retreat, I'm not stopping to say hi to people along the way. I gotta get to my seat. Yeah. I'm a driver. Totally. I know. Neil will always tell me, smile, you know. I, I don't know, especially when I'm You just need to start that affirmation in your head over and over. My smile is my secret weapon. You know, it will, it will elevate you like nothing else you can do. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Good job. Thanks, Tess. Honestly, by tweaking that one little thing, I think you would get double the number of listing presentations that you go on. People want to be around high energy. Awesome, thank you. Good job, great idea, great thought. Thanks, Gene. Uh, Robert, go ahead. Uh, two questions. One, um, can we do like a weekly thing with Gene? Is that possible? <laughs> like, can we do that just as a? Um, yeah, just thank an you. Just an idea. Just an idea. You know, I mean, it doesn't sound like she's too busy. Um, you know, I'll tell you <laughs> something though, Robert. There's a point in that. So I. I wanted my customer service to increase here. So I called all my other friends that are brokers and said, can I do a presentation to your office on customer service? Because I wanted that so ingrained in my own brain. And so if you want to have more mindset, call your friends and say, hey, I'm going to do a, you know, call me and say, Gene, you want to, want to, want to see me do a presentation on mindset? I'll zoom in with you. That's but it great. helps you to have other people out there be accountable to yeah 100 100 that's exactly. great great thought so my 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 second question gene um comes from kind of a coaching perspective you mentioned earlier you know you, you don't need the money this is a, a passion for you I, I get the the issue we have sometimes with coaching is when agents don't have that strong enough why they don't need the money so why get up and prospect every day? So, so what is it for you that I don't need the money? It's a passion, but I still get up and prospect every day, even though it sucks. It does suck. I, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know what these Neil Weichels, they're nuts. They, you know, it does suck. It, but I've never liked it. But I, you know, the money doesn't drive me either. I, I had to kind of come to that conclusion as well. But you know what does drive me is helping other people to be successful. That's why I think I wouldn't retire uh, because I like to see, I mean, I'm thrilled to see the Evans brothers at their level. And now I have Kruger team and other teams that are working with my company that we're we just want to, I just want to help other people. It goes back to that, what is it, Zig Ziglar, Neil, that says help other people get what they want right. and you'll get what you want. Exactly. You know? that, that's, that's the credo by which I live. I started my whole career on that. <laughs> so one time I was speaking on a panel of, uh, at the Realtors Association and I heard, and I was the top, when I was young in the business, and there were the top five or six realtors in the business up there in my area in Utah, and they all told this one realtor really told all of her secrets about what she did to be so successful. So I went up to her after, and I said, "Oh my goodness, how do you dare to tell everybody here your secrets?" And she said, "Easy, Jean. Not one person in this room will do what I said." And that's when I thought. I will. You know, I wrote down everything she said and I did it. And that's why we all keep going back and back and back to Mike Ferry because you didn't get it last time. You, you've just, it's just a reminder to keep doing it. And, you know, I didn't really get the smiling thing until we had to start really doing Zoom. That's great. Fantastic. You know, um, Karen Maya had asked in the chat box. Um, Jean, what, what do you send to your database? Do you, do you send mailers or emails or th things like that? Yes. I have, uh, you'll die when I tell you this, but it's successful for me. I used to send Sations, S-E-N-D, Sations postcards out of Orem, Utah, and they have calendars, they have uh, tips, they have recipes. I have tried them all. And if you want to know the truth, the ones that have the most longevity are the recipes. Every time they go out, I mail out about 1500 a month. I follow up with my past client calls. I get three to five leads from those because you know what? They don't need a realtor today. 99% of those go in the trash, but the one day that they come in, uh, they have, they, and they save recipes. So they go to get them. They go and get my phone number out of their recipe box. 
hey, your recipe came and it reminded me to ask you, what about this? So if in, in the recession of 2008, I cut my database by one third with my recipe cards. And then when things picked up in 2012, I started mailing again to my B, C, and D clients. And I was only mailing to my A clients to save money. I, I can personally track that I lost over 500,000 a year by stopping the mailings. Wow. Because people said to me, whoa, we didn't know what happened to you. We thought you retired or got out of the business. Oh, Ouch. I heard that so much. It was a Ouch. big mistake. Ouch. Uh, so Liz wanted you to repeat the name of the company. What was it? Sensations? I'm, I'm putting the link in the chat box right now. Send, right. like sending a letter, sensations.com. Yep. And you Got can it. go okay. online and look at them. Good. Perfect. Thank you. All right, other questions for Jean, please. Good stuff, Miss Jean. Uh, Josie. I could go on for a couple of hours with you, Jean. So you, your, your effort, I wrote, last time you talked to us, you gave us some affirmations and I say them. I say affirmations every day. This time you said another, I got the smile of my secret weapon. You were saying, um, you're, you're not here to be average. You're here to be what? Awesome. awesome. Easy. Which, by the way, is really funny for me because I don't allow that word in my office. <laughs> Which because, word? I'll, I'll tell you why. Awesome. I don't want my, my assistant saying to our clients, awesome. Awesome. So why? Because it's a kid word. It's a word that a young, unprepared, that and like. Like I went out to like, you know, that word that creeps in the kids vocabulary, but awesome is a word and perfect is another one. I don't allow my assistants to say it just is a kid word. I want us to sound more professional. Hello, Jean. Yes. Hi, this is Michael. How are you doing? Good. Uh, thank you. I, yeah, I just got a question. And when Neil asked you about last year, when the COVID started, you said, okay, I'm going to have to do something different. I need to do my numbers. And you say you went out of the area. I'm just curious to see what was your uh, script, you know, when you were talking to those new people that were all shocked about this news, what was, what were you saying to them? You know, well, like you, you know, first of all, I, I just really focused on people that I knew my centers of influence or around my listings or something like that. You know, I would just first say, just checking in with you and wanted to make sure is everybody okay in your home? And just wanted to remind you that the real estate market is very good right now. The interest rates are phenomenal. We've just never been anywhere else but this. And is there anything I can do for you and your family? Do you, do you need to understand forbearance loans or anything like that? So always to try and bring something of contribution to them. Uh, all right. Thank you. All right. Good question, Michael. Thank you. All right. Other questions for Jean? Anyone else? Everybody's got it. Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead, Cherry. Jean, do you put your past clients and your COI into your mojo and Vulcan to make notes in it? Because you said- Yes, I do. Okay. So I'll tell you what, I think I use mojo better than most agents. So what I do have in mind, I have A clients, B clients, C clients. So A's are people I know, love, I work with a lot. Uh, and I could take them to lunch. I try to take my A client. I take somebody to lunch every Thursday. I have a hundred in there. So I call and ask to go to lunch to everybody in there. You know, most people say no, but at least they know I wanted to take them to lunch, you know, and then I have my top 100s. The, so I focus very heavily on trying to get a hundred people to just give me one deal. And then my B's and C's and D's, I call, you know, B's every quarter, C's every six months, D's once a year. And then I have um, high net worth individuals. So if I have a very high end listing that I see that comes on the market, hey, I thought you might love to see this home. Even if they're not looking for a home, it's fun to look at. So I say, hey, I know you enjoy nice homes and nice things. I thought you might like to look at this. And then we've also tied in our Google database uh, you know, you can tie in your database with Google. So if I list a home out in the Alpine area, I will look and see who in that neighborhood I've sold homes to in the past. I mean, that's not something you can really do if you're a new agent. But then also I have 
um, all of my church in there. And sometimes I just call the people in my church once or twice a year. I don't ever bring up real estate, ever, ever. I just always call and say, just thinking about you today. And I wanted to let you know that you mean a lot to me. And I want to see how you're doing. And I get a very large portion of business from that. And I don't even solicit them, truthfully. So just making sure that you're out there. One year, I sold the house to nine cashiers at my grocery store. Nordstrom, I sold the house to six or seven cashiers. I mean, I don't shop very much anymore. I do mostly Zoom. I'm, you know, because of my age, I don't go out a lot. And so I don't want to get COVID. My brother-in-law was in there for and nearly died. And I saw what he went through. So, but you can totally, I love the COVID in a way because it's taught us that you can do everything on Zoom if you really have to. It's a mindset. But I like it. I'm not driving around so much. Wow. Amazing. Um, you you, you recapture those... a lot of time, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Gene, yeah. you mentioned your Google database. Can you elaborate with that? So you don't pay for a CRM. You just use your mojo. I Well, I you know, we have had A-Frame in the past. We've just changed to, I'm sure Neil's probably paperless in his office. We just changed to DocuSign transaction rooms. Uh, I don't love it so far. I'll tell you next time you talk to me if we love it. It doesn't do everything that you can. Um, and you can waste a lot of money changing from system to system because, you know, once I start typing my notes into Mojo, if I change to Vulcan 7, I lose those. So that's why I still have two because I have a lot of data from my old. And as I'm, you know, uh, depending on whichever program you use, it doesn't matter. But I like, I like the link. You know, and I'll tell you what really uh, has helped all of us is we get on with, if anybody wants to prospect during mountain time, certain hours, we get on Google and there's big fines. If I'm not prospecting from nine until 11, my time, then it's a thousand dollars for me. So if I truly want to go take an appointment, I can, but it's a thousand dollars. No questions asked. So t tell me more about that. What? <laughs> I want to know more about that. It's just called Google Hangout. And it's just like this where, you know, I can put you all on mute, but you can actually tune in and hear me prospecting if you wanted to. But the other agents that are in our group that we just get on and we all prospect and we can see each other. And if I, you know, of course, I have to have them on mute most of the time. But if I see them sitting around, I might send them a text, get back on, get back on track or. You know, if they don't show up or they're gone to the bathroom too long. So this is this is part of your mastermind group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Or prospect. It's really a prospecting group. You could just find, I, I recommend that you find people in your time zone to do it with. Yeah, actually, you're welcome to join us. We do a, we do what we call an open mic. Um, I'll send you the details on it from nine to noon, Monday through Friday. And, um, Every 30 minutes we change or somebody else is on the mic and everybody else is prospecting. Um, so it's very powerful. Oh, I might like to do that with yeah, you. I'll, I'll, uh, we actually have some, uh, actually Matab is here uh, from Montreal joining us in the mastermind group. She joins us and we have some, we have Marcy Murphy and a few of the other agents from around the country join us from time to time. So. Absolutely, we'd love to have you. It'd be cool. So you know, consistency is the key. Consistency and accountability. Having someone hold you accountable is really key. Absolutely, absolutely. Gene, this has been fantastic. We are so honored to have you and have your time. Uh, let's everybody unmute yourselves. Let's give Gene Tanner a big hand. Woo! Woo! All right, good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Never be afraid to get this your is, secrets this out. Has they been, won't do it. This has been sorry. Well, I say never be afraid to get your secrets out. They won't now. do it. Just share it. Exactly. Okay. So uh, 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 I'll send you that information on the uh, open mic that we do. We'd love to be able to uh, have you back in the future. This is uh, this has just been uh, mind blowing. <laughs> so Good thank idea. you for being you. Thank you for sharing. And uh, have a fantastic day. All right, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Feel free to call me if you have questions. All right. We'll okay. post your information. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Okay, wow, fantastic. So what did we learn today from Miss Jean Tanner? I love that what she said was, don't be afraid to ask for the business. Do you think I can sell your home? Just ask it. Just ask, ask. Actually, Tess, I think you ask. <laughs> Too much. Uh, I've listened. I've listened to your prospect. <laughs> I don't think asking is a problem. <laughs> no. I, I appreciate you like it and you'll be inspired by it, but you ask many, many times. Okay. <laughs> Good. You. Good. Robert? You know, um, a couple, I mean, I wrote down a, a bunch of things, but I guess one thing that I, the two things that really stood out to me was one that, you know, she, she's, her honesty is a, such a key point. And like, for example, she says, you know, I don't like to prospect. And, and I think it's sometimes refreshing to hear that because sometimes we hear, like she said, Neil Weichel or Bernie Gallery. It's like, oh, I get up, I get fired up and make 34 contacts a day. And internally we're like, well, I suck then because I don't want to do that. So I think it's refreshing to hear someone like her. It's like, I don't like to do this, but I got to do it. So I like that. The other thing I wrote down that I picked up on is how professional she is. Like she talks about when you go to the door, it's shoulders up. It's the way you walk. It's the way you act. Like it's body language. The word you use, you can't use awesome. You can't use perfect. Like she, she wrote down, you can't say awesome. And I wrote that down going, oh crap. Like, <laughs> like I'd say it all probably doesn't let her people say, oh crap either. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But just the, the professionalism okay. of your body language, the words you use, like that's next level stuff. And I just I think that's really neat. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Okay, what else did we learn? Go ahead, uh, Josie. <laughs> the two books, Tiny Habits, Atomic Habits. Yeah. Look them up and buy them. Yeah. Robert, can you uh, put those books in the chat box for us? Yep, I'll put the links to them too. Thank you. Thank you. I just need to remember to Kindle order them. Um, oh, I could do it on my phone. I have a Kindle. Um, okay, what else do we have today? What, what else do we learn? My database is my liquid gold details in the notes. So, critical. so you already know that your database is your liquid gold. Mm -hmm. The difference is that you need to, you need to do what she does and doesn't let anything get in the way of her prospecting time, huh? Absolutely. Yes. That's number two for sure. I, I will tell you, I, I found it refreshing because she would allow things to get in the way of her exercise and she would allow things to get in the way of her piano, which sounded like it was very important to her, mm -hmm. you know? However, what was more important was what? Prospecting. 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 Yeah, not the exercise and not the piano. And I, you know, uh, when I knew Jean, when she was coaching with me, uh, she wasn't as healthy as she is today. That is one very healthy lady. She's oh. really done a great job transforming herself. So it's good stuff. Um, okay, what else? What else do we learn? I, I, I learned that she said that you manufacture your own energy. You're the one responsible for the energy in the room. That That's you right. That you, contribute. That, that you guys should write down. That is a brilliant thought because because I always say energy sells and if you don't have some you need to get some and and she says you need to manufacture it if you don't have it manufacture it that is a great brilliant thought yeah she said you are the one who is you're responsible for the energy in the room that you contribute yep. to the room yep yep I like that a lot all right, what else did we learn? Like she was talking I about learned. and uh, starting like small steps, consistency. That's right, consistency, absolutely. Who was, who else was? I, I Go learned. Ahead, Go ahead. 
My smile is my secret weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great thought. Absolutely. All right, what else did we learn today? I like the idea of taking the top agent, uh, top clients to lunch. <laughs> you just want to go to lunch. I kind of thought that was fun. <laughs> I can go to lunch outside on a picnic table, I guess. I was waiting for somebody to say that. I, I wrote down, I, I actually wrote it down. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, go to lunch every Thursday. Hmm, interesting. That'd be nice. <laughs> and also that she wasn't worried about calling everyone exactly the same, that the top hundred to get one deal a year. And then the B group is every quarter and the C is every six months. Right. Right, 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 right. Good stuff. Great stuff. All right. What else did we learn here? I like, I like that she would ask her clients about the ages of her, of, of their kids. Because yeah. I mean, that happened to me. I mean, I just closed the deal where I am now on the second generation, you know, right. which is really, really good. I think that's, you know, and no, I, she's, She's taking a lot of notes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and 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 I I agree. I don't think we take enough notes. Right. Yeah, that's a great thought. But but some of us don't have any notes. Oops. Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> Oops. All right. What else do we learn? We need to move on here. Any any last learners? Last ideas? Okay, Robert, what do we got? What'd you get? What was your big takeaway? You know, the clean office. I I wrote that. I did write that down. The clean office, because because she's right. My mind is a mess. You can't have a hoarder's house in your brain. No. Now the clean office and the interesting thing is that I don't really use the stuff on my desk, but I'm always afraid when I need it, it won't be there. And so therefore it stays, I'm telling you, everything that's on my desk in front of me right now has been here for two weeks. Except, you know, the only thing that keeps moving is this, this notepad and my cell phone. Everything else doesn't really need to be here. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Uh, that, that was kind of it. Uh, all right. So, Robert, where are we going with this? We got Abigail at 1, Reva at one thirty, Tess at 2. Well, Tess, are you doing 2 o'clock? I, I had you down, but I didn't know if that's accurate. That's okay. I can do that. Okay. Tess is at two and Ollie's at two 30 and then at three 30, we're working on the script for the listing plan of action. I like it. So there we go. All Thanks, right. Neil. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Good stuff. Thanks. Neil. Um, my pleasure. Thank you. I hope everybody is going back and listening to these videos. There's about 60 of them up there. And when you do, there's some amazing, amazing stuff. Amazing. So there you go. Neil, Neil yes, yes. I tried looking up Jean T Tanner just while she was talking on your um, list of people that they've talked to and I couldn't find her. Well, we never did Jean Tanner before. I thought we did. No, no, we did. We, uh, one of the guys that works with her, Dan Evans, we did, um, but not Jean Tanner, no. Nope, nope, never did. Actually, the only one we've done twice is um, Steve Powers. Steve Powers is, I think, the only one that we've done twice. 
of course, Mike Ferry, but um, uh, in terms of superstar agents or coaches, um, I think that was it. Melinda, maybe Nancy Dupre. Um, I think that was it. So, but I, I she's definitely uh, somebody we'll get back here. Three million dollars a year, you guys, selling houses in Utah. <laughs> Who knew? Like four Karen five, says, four hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, four or five hundred thousand dollar houses in Utah. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> That's my price range. That's great. <laughs> exactly, and you got a few million dollar things in your neighborhood too, right? Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like you being in Utah. Come on down. <laughs> yeah, so why don't you ask Todd, what the heck's going on here? Get busy. All right. <laughs> hey, Neil, did she say she mails out those postcards once a month? 1500 a month, I believe. Wow. 15, no. Postcards, they're not postcards, recipes. Yeah, I know. Do not <laughs> tell my story. You know I know, we all think it's corny. Maybe what? Utah, we all think it's corny here. Maybe Utah is different or maybe not. I don't know. You know, it's, it's that you, she said, she said it's corny and you're not gonna believe it. But I send out these recipe cards and she said, I tried everything else. And this is the thing that seems to resonate with people. So what do I know? You know, I think it makes sense. And I've never done it before, but I, I like the idea. Same with the note cards. And one of your fellow agents does those. Um, Meg, Meg sends out a note card, a personal note on every past client and sphere she talks to every day. Do you know that? Say that again. <laughs> so Meg Middleman yeah. made a stack of note cards. I think they, they're, they're personalized. Yeah. And they sit on her desk. And every time she calls a past client in Sphere, she talks to them. She sends a note. Good talking with you. Appreciate you. La, 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 la. And then has her assistant mail it out. Wow. I did not no know way. that. Wow. Every time she talks to somebody, she sends them a, a note. And wow. not, not a long note, just a little note. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks for this today. This was great. Thank you, Neil. You're welcome. You're welcome. Our pleasure.